Welcome back. Very interesting views there, but what are your thoughts on the issue? Please share your views by tweeting at us. Let's move on now and bring you a review of some of the major activities that shaped the judiciary in the year 2017. The year 2017 can be described as a very eventful and somewhat controversial year for the Nigerian judiciary as issues of image, perception and trust, which plague the third arm of government, refused to go away. 2016 ended with an acting Chief Justice of Nigeria. This issue and the raid by the men of the Department of State Services, DSS, on the residence of some judicial officers between October 7 and 9, which led to their arrest and subsequent suspension from the bench by the National Judicial Council, NJC, continued to form major talking points throughout year 2017. The NJC had recommended the appointment of Justice Walter Onoge as the CJN after the retirement of Honorable Justice Mahmoud Mohammed on November 10, 2016. But President Mohamed Buhari chose to appoint him in an acting capacity. These generated a lot of controversy, which was finally laid to rest in March 2017, when the then acting president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, swore in Justice Onoge as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. The raid on judges and the subsequent suspension of eight sitting judges, including two justices of the Supreme Court, assumed a new twist on the 1st of June 2017, when the NJC recalled six of the suspended judges. The NJC, chaired by Justice Onage, had argued that eight months after they were suspended over allegations of corruption, only three of the judges, Justice Sylvester Anguta of the Supreme Court, Justice Rita Ophelia Jumagobia and Justice Adeni Ademola, both of the Federal High Court, were arraigned in court. While Justice Inyang Okoro of the Supreme Court, Justice Uwani Abaji of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ayla Zirangajiwa and Justice Musa Kira, both of the Federal High Court, as well as Justice Agbado Fishim of the National Industrial Court, were never put on trial. Of those who stood trial, only Justice Ademola's case has been concluded as he was acquitted and discharged of the criminal charges made against him. Only recently, however, he was compulsorily retired by the NJC over allegations of official misconduct. The decision of the NJC to recall the seven six judges, however, appeared to serve as a wake-up call for the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, SAN. Through the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on June 13, he arraigned Justice Ngajua before the Lagos State High Court. And on July 11, Justice Fishim was also docked before the same court. But the prosecution of these seven judges appears to have been halted for now, because on December 11, following an appeal filed by Justice Nganjua, challenging the validity of his trial, the Lagos Division of the Court of Appeal, presided over by Justice Abimbola Adejumo Baseki, dismissed the 14-count charge made against the judge. The appellate court also ruled that a serving judge could not be investigated and prosecuted by the EFCC unless such a judge is first suspended or dismissed by the NJC. The implication of this verdict is that the EFCC may not be able to proceed against all seven judges currently under trial until the Supreme Court rules one way or the other on the issue. Apparently worried by the trial of judges and the image of the judiciary, the CJN on June 5 inaugurated a 13-man steering committee on judiciary reforms. The committee, which is headed by the Secretary of the National Judicial Service Commission, is tasked with coordinating a comprehensive reform of the country's judiciary. Also on September 28, the CJN announced the setting up of a Corruption and Financial Crime Cases Trial Monitoring Committee initially to be chaired by a retired president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ayo Salami, who opted out for personal reasons. He was replaced by a retired justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Suleiman Galadima. The committee, which has since begun work, was set up in response to the concerns expressed by Nigerians on the very slow speed at which corruption cases were being heard and disposed of by the courts. According to the CJN, the committee will drive the NJC's new policy on the anti-corruption war 
by giving it feedback on the progress of cases in the designated courts, conducts background checks on judges selected for the designated courts, and evaluate the performance of these courts. In the courtrooms, the judges were also very busy. One of the biggest cases the courts resolved in the course of the year is the People's Democratic Party leadership crisis case between the Senator Ahmed Makafi led caretaker committee and the Senator Ali Modi Sharif led executive. It was resolved in favor of Senator Makafi by the Apex Court on July 12. The trial of the Senate President Dr. Bukala Saraki over allegations of false asset declaration took a dramatic twist on December 12 when Justice Tinua Dea Komalafe Wilson of the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja struck out 15 of the 18 counts charged filed against him by the federal government and ordered the Code of Conduct Tribunal to conduct a fresh trial of the Senate President on three of the charges. The tribunal had earlier in the year cleared him of all charges. However, in spite of these efforts and others made by the EFCC and other agencies with power to prosecute criminal cases, the problem of delay in the process of justice delivery remains largely unresolved, as none of the corruption-related cases commenced since President Buhari came into power was concluded. The high-profile cases still pending in court includes those of the Senate President, the pension scam fraud in the office of the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, the now infamous oil subsidy scam and the Central Bank of Nigeria currency scam. Others are fraud cases involving the former head of the Federal Civil Service, Steve Orosanye, and corruption charges leveled against some former governors, many of which have been pending since 2007. Other cases yet to be resolved one way or the other includes those indicted over the funds for the purchase of arms to fight Boko Haram. Former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Ulisa Metu, former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, and former Chairman Dark Communications PLC, Chief Raymond Dupesi. Others are the case of the former Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Adeshola Amoso, the trial of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Namdi Kano, the trial of a former Niger Delta militant leader, Government Ekpemopolo, popularly known as Tompolo, the trial of some past yeah. leaderships of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Massa, the trial of a former Minister of Finance, Nenadi Usman, and the DG of the President Goodluck Jonathan campaign, Femi Fani Kayode, the trial of billionaire kidnapper Chukudumeme Wamadike, popularly known as Evans, and many more. The courts across the country have presently embarked on the Christmas and New Year vacation. When they resume in 2018, the expectation is that they resume with renewed vigor to do justice to all, irrespective of status, religion or ethnicity. Nigerians also expect that the judiciary will completely purge itself of the few bad eggs in its midst so that it can truly live up to the reputation of being the hope of the common man. And that's the program for today. If you missed any part of it, you can find it in past episodes on our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shaley. Thank you for watching and compliments of the season to everyone.